before. So um, it was almost perfect timing and alignment when I got the call, so I answered the phone. And um, I was training at the time. I had already put, um, put in my mind and put on the schedule to fight four times next year, four different forms of combat, and um, just really be extremely active. So I was already training, already um, kind of getting battle ready um, <clears throat> to take a fight in um, January. And um, I was on break on set uh, doing a film. So when I got the call, um, it probably took 20 seconds for me to say yes. And, um, you know, now we're here. That's terrific. All right, let's go to our first question from Jim Conlon. Jim, please identify your outlet and go ahead. Hi, Tyrone. This is Jim Conlon here from RCB Radio Sport Ireland. Tyrone, I'm just wondering, uh, in terms of the fight, obviously you're delighted to be fighting uh, Jake again, but uh, in terms of Tommy Fury, does that really concern you? Do you think he really backed down for the fight? If you were in his position, would you have fought on? Yeah, I don't know the circumstance. I don't know his position, to be honest. I feel like things happen the way they're supposed to happen. I feel like this is a fight that should have been taking place anyway. This is a fight that more people are excited about. Um, it's kind of funny that that fight was set up for December the 18th and more people were talking about a rematch with me and Jake anyway. So um, <clears throat> I feel things happen um, in time and purpose for a reason, and I'm just more so focusing on that. So I never wish bad upon anybody. I don't want anybody to get hurt so I can step forward. So um, <clears throat> I don't really have much to say about Tommy Fury. I'm not in this camp. I don't really know him. And it really, you know, not to sound mean, but I really don't care about, um, you know, his reason and the rationale for not taking a fight. I'm just here and I'm ready, willing, and, um, you know, trying to go on there and knock his head off. And finally, for me, Tyrone, is revenge the driving motive for you heading into this fight? Obviously, there's an awful lot of talk between both parties, but do you, you obviously feel aggrieved uh, from the first fight. Is that revenge? Is it driving you? Is it driving that motivation, making you work harder in the gym, making you work 10 times harder for this fight? You know, you, you, very few times you get a chance to, to, to go back and redo something. Sometimes you, you sit there and you live in regret, like, dang, man, you know, I felt like I won the fight. You know, maybe I could have did this a little bit different. Maybe if I would have, you know, me threw a few more punches here. So now I get the, the, the opportunity to go back and um, undo what was already done. So that's something that drives me without even any additional money, in addition to sold out crowd. So um, the fact that Jake Paul can walk around and say he beat me fucking just boils my skin and blood and everything inside of my body. So uh, I'm trying to go out there and just make it clear that, uh, you know, I'm the better fighter. I'm the harder puncher, and uh, I'm the professional harder. Best of luck, Tyron. Thank you. Thank the aptly titled then, Leave No Doubt. So congratulations to Nikisa Bedarian and Jake for coming up with that one. Um, let's go to Damon Martin, MMA Fighting. Let me try that again. Stand by here. Damon Martin, you with us? There you go. Sorry. Uh, Tyron, yeah. thank you for the time. Uh, we heard that you were preparing for a fight in January. You were in training camp. We heard that maybe you kind of had a, a, a feeling that, that Tommy was going to fall out of the fight. Like, how well prepared are you for this fight? You know, I'm going to look. I'm going to look like the better conditioner of fighter. I, I promise you that. When you watch this fight, it won't look like I stepped in on last week. You know, it won't look like he was a person that was prepared and in shape, and I just jumped in for a bag and jumped in the second car. It's going to look like I'm going to be in better shape, just like it was the first time. I was the one that was walking him down. I was the one that, you know, was, um, you know, really putting him against the ropes. He was the one that was huffing and puffing. So when people start talking about, you know, I mean, youth and things of that nature, I think this is going to be the same thing. For me, I didn't have a lot of uh, footage to break down for him. On Jake, I didn't have a lot of sparring sessions. I didn't have a lot of fights. Most of his fights ended fairly quickly. So now I actually been in there with him. I felt his power. I felt the things that um, you know he did well, and also felt the things that that I did to him that he didn't like so much. So now I got eight rounds to break down, make adjustments. We all know nobody's better at rematching than me. Uh, of course, Jake made a big deal about the $500,000 knockout bonus. Uh, at the end of the day, listen, I know you don't like Jake, but I, I don't think there was ever a clause in the contract saying you couldn't knock him out. But uh, does that, I mean, does that add any extra, you know, any extra motivation to go out there and earn an extra half a million dollars to knock him out? I mean, at the end of the day, you put a bag on your own head, shit. I'm, I'm completely all about taking that free money, so... I had plans on doing that anyway. If you want to entice me a little bit more, you don't offer a kid from Berks and another half a bag to go out there and do what he wanted to do anyway. So, yeah, it does put motivation. When people say that I'm not motivated by, um, 
not motivated by, you know, uh, the seatbelt on purpose. that one too. I'm looking for car seat. Yeah. Go ahead, we can hear you, Tyron. one for me Tyron you know the last fight it was very very close and of course you came the closest to finishing the fight with the the, the knockdown and, and nearly putting him through the ropes in the one in the one round as you called it what it was because uh, the, the referee surely did what, what do you what do you feel like is the it was the biggest mistake you made in that fight that's going to be the difference in this fight um I feel like it was times where um I made a miss but I didn't make a pay I'm not going to go into technique I'm not going to go into game plan and I feel like it was times that um, he could have had uh, a more stern, uh, more stern consequence for even trying to hit me. So um, that's the one thing that I can pick out. If I change that, um, I feel like the fight is. You know, I feel like I won the fight anyway. I kind of watched the fight really for the first time yesterday, and I won rounds four through eight. That's five, but that's five, but um, that's five, but eight rounds. So I don't understand how I can win four, five, six, seven, and eight, and he still won the fight, even not. We're counting the 10 round um, in the fourth round. So um, add those little small tweaks in there, um, a little bit more volume, and I think we'll see to get the knockout. Thanks, Tyron. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Damon. Let's go to Donna Corby across the way. Donna, um, please identify yourself, your outlet. And go hey, ahead. Donna Corby from uh, uh, the Daily Mirror. Tyron, I wanted to ask about your initial plans before this fight was put on first off you were on the set of a movie correct you're you're still are you still filming i'm still filming yes i'm still putting my yeah. raps on so we've got one more day yeah. so you were on yeah. you were on set of a movie just like michael bisping was i suppose when, when he had that that famous fight with with luke rockhold and he took it on on short notice and and you had also said you were planning on fighting four times next year in four different disciplines is that still the plan or will it have to be three now considering you probably can't fight in january no i you know, I, to be honest, like, I don't want to look ahead, but I'm not losing to Jake Paul. I didn't lose him for the first time, and this time I'm finishing the fight. I don't want no referee. I don't want no hometown advantage. I don't want no uh, let's let the storyline continue type shit happening at all. So um, what it's going to do is it's probably going to set us up to fight a third time, and I'm just going to replace the boxing fight I anticipated fight next year. It's going to be a fight with Jake instead. So I'm still going to fight four times. I'm still going to fight four different forms of combat. But the boxing fight that I was, you know, being prepared to fight for, that fight has just been replaced with a trilogy with Jake. Without saying too much, is Dan Hardy going to be disappointed to hear that news? I mean, Dan Hardy, why are we even talking about Dan Hardy? We're talking about Tyron Woodley, Jake Paul, the biggest fighter of the year. So let's respect myself and respect Jake Paul because we're the ones that put the asses in the seats. Dan Hardy ain't touched the, touched the face in 10 years. Last one from me. Uh, could you show us the tattoo? Could we see the, no, the I mean, infamous? I, but it is I'll real. I'll show you the other end of it, though. <laughs> the tattoo's right on the back. Though. Thank you very much, Tyron. You got it. All right, thank you, Donna. Let's go to uh, Gabriel Montoya. Gabriel, go ahead. Hi, it's Gabriel Montoya with uh, Ring Magazine. Uh, thank you for your time, Mr. Woodley. Um, you were very outspoken after the first fight and before it that you felt Jake Paul was on PEDs. Um, it's come to my attention he has Memo Heredia, a former PED dealer in his camp, who's now like a strength coach. Is there testing for this fight uh, with Vada or USADA, and does that concern you? Um, I always want to even play a field. You know, I ask him straight up. I don't want to go around and 
I don't know who the guy you mentioned. It's not really. I'm not fighting him. I'm fighting Jake. So then when we did the face to face, I asked him directly to his face that the man was here on PDs. And his answer to me was no. So uh, there will uh, there will be testing. There's uh, stuff in the contract about testing. Um, I don't feel like it it changed the fight if he was on PDs. But um, you know, obviously you want to even plan for him. So I, I'm a big believer in uh, testing. Uh, I've never even seen a fucking PD that's not thrown one in my body. I feel like when your time is up, your body doesn't allow you to compete at the level, that's your time to walk away. And I pray that you've done everything that you were supposed to do with the time frame that you had. I'm not trying to add another few combinations of punches or conditioning or uh, tolerance uh, due to PD. So um, I can't really answer that question. I don't know what he's doing. I can only ask him the question as a man. When I asked him, his answer was no. And um, hopefully the test reflects the same thing. Did you see anything in looking back at your fight with him uh, in particular that you feel, obviously you're not going to give away your game plan, but did you see glaring things that he did or that you did that you can change in this rematch? As I said earlier, I just feel like, um, you know, there was times in an earlier round, one, two, three, where, you know, he was keeping busy and it wasn't like he was really landing or anything damaging. There was no time where he hit me punch that made the referee want to get in there or made it look like I was going to go down. Um, he punches hard. Um, one thing you'll find out about me is I'm going to keep it real. I'm going to keep it straight out of the middle no matter what it is. I'm not going to act like Jake Park does not punch hard. I'm not going to act like he doesn't have the ability. And he does have punching power. And um, I feel like he hit me with um, four shots that I could actually remember myself. I'm pretty sure if I go back and break down the field, it's probably was more than that. But he hit me with punches that I know may have sent others down to the campus. So with that said, I just got to make him pay a little bit more, um, you know, when he goes out there and try to stay busy. I feel like if I would have done that in the first couple of rounds, um, he would have won around and set him up, you know, to get out. All right, thank you so much. Good luck in the fight. All right, Gabe, thank you. Uh, let's go to Stephen Milhausen with the zone. Stephen? Stephen Milhausen, you're live with the press. Just watch. Oh. Hi, Tyron. Um, you had said that you had watched the, the video yet, the video of the fight yesterday. Why didn't you watch it? Stephen, what was the reasoning behind that? Stephen, you are a little. Stephen, can you talk just a little bit louder, my man? Yeah, you were a little bit low there, Stephen. Go ahead. Yeah, can you can you hear me now, Tyron? Uh, I can Sorry, listen Stephen, closely. Sorry about that, guys. Um, did what was the reasoning behind just watching the uh, first fight yesterday? I mean, this fight wasn't announced seven weeks ago, <laughs> so you know the first thing first is jump your ass in the sparring. And uh, running and conditioning, training and, and sharpening the tools and being in shape is one thing, but specifying your training towards a specific, sorry, specific person, um, you know, that's what I actually started doing first. Um, my coach knows very well what he did, uh, what he did in the fight, um, also what I did in the fight. So the sparring partner, partners for the last fight came in. We started doing that first. Last night we had an opportunity to, to calm things down because we kind of hit the, hit the ground running. And then we went to watch the film and evaluate it. So from that point, um, from that point, I actually uh, um, got a chance to watch it and uh, check out some of the rounds. You know, he he was very complimentary to you the other day about the fact that you that you did take the fight. And do you have any newfound respect for him? The fact that he could have said no, he could have dropped out of the fight. So is there any respect there in the fact that he's also taking this fight on short notice with you? I mean, I, I never really said anything that wasn't true. Um, everything that I said I was going to do in the last fight, I did. Um, he got hit with culture. He got hit with a shitload of punches. He was the one that was backing up, and I was the one that was walking him down. Um, Jay got a screw loose. We all know that. So it doesn't surprise me. Um, we all also knew that he would be a kid that could probably get hit with punches, and get, uh, even if it hurts. You know, it's all a part of his gag. This was a bucket list, let's be real. This was a bucket list 
if we convert it into career. So for the storyline, for the sake of, you know, the movie that we're making, we're in a movie. This is a movie, guys. It's like Rocky in real life. I mean, you know. So for this, I don't think he or his team will pass up an opportunity because everybody thinks he's scared of him. I mean, even after, you know, the bets and all the you know, shenanigans and split decision and all the naysayers to him saying that I really want to fight that, you know, was hometown judging, he would have to make this right. He would have to rectify the book. Your opponent's out. I'm willing. I'm ready to fight. Um, had I came out publicly and said that, and he not taking the fight, everything that he says, all this, I'm a real fighter, Jazz, all that stuff's out the window. So I think for that storyline, and also the saving card, you know, like, which I don't realize we're fighting, but it's really entertainment. It's not so much fighting. Fighting is what we we're doing when you're watching us entertain. But the interviews, the press, the media, the training camp, the funds that you put into that, nobody want to just waste that shit. So I can't speak for Jake. I really only know Jake from, you know, the, the press conferences and the one-on-ones, you know, him as an athlete, fighter. I don't know him personally, so I don't know what his motivation really is. That's the question you might want to ask him in the piece. Well, I'm, I'm going to follow that up. This is Chris de Blasio here um, with the, the, the thank and, you. That and I one s- final one, Tyron. Okay. Go ahead, Steve. Let Chris follow up first. Yeah, you, yeah. yeah. So j- just saying the thank you that I gave at the top for Tyron Woodley stepping up is not just uh, a platitude or, 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 or a, 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 a loose comment. Um, it's a sincere thank you because fighters on the card, their camps, their, their, tra- their teams, their preparations – uh, a lot has gone into that for the undercard. Um, and, and those guys are all coming to fight and make their mark on an important show. And without Tyron Woodley stepping up at late notice, um, the potential for all that to go away was high. So that's a legit thank you. Go ahead, Steven. Last one. Hey, don't be scared to throw a little extra cheese in the back running. So thank you, too. So how that showtime on that, too? Chris, go ahead, Steve. No, definitely, and thank and thank you, Chris. And if if you if you do what you expect to do next Saturday night, you're gonna get rid of that tattoo now because, in all honesty, you won the rematch. I mean, to be honest, I strolled the troll. I put the tattoo in a place where powerlifting and bench pressing and turf and bear claws and uh, nothing nothing on your body you wash more than your hands. It was kind of like, I'll get the tattoo, but it's going to wear down anyway. And I really don't mind it. If my dogs made a bet with me, I'm going to honor that bet. It's a part of the story. It's a part of the deal. Nobody can say shit to me. I probably, probably beat your ass anyway. So if anybody in public, like, oh, I can't believe you have no bet. You're probably broke, and you're probably not chasing your dream because you're spending a lot of time on the internet dumbing around and, and telling me what I should do. So um, I feel like if he would have lost the bet, I feel like he would have gotten a tattoo or he would have never made the bet. So it doesn't really bother me. Like my, my legacy and what, I, what I've what i done in combat sports, um, what I've done in combat sports and what I'm going to continue to do is submit it. So I'm not, I'm not really focused on all the naysayers and everything. Like that. All right. That's, that's great. Uh, I think we've got Thank time. You, for one. See you next week in Tampa. All right, cool. All right, Stephen. Thanks. Uh, we got time for one more. Let's go to Richard Diasio. Richard with MMA Examiner. Hey, good morning, everyone uh, here on the West Coast. Thanks for taking my time, uh, Bill. I can start off maybe uh, with with your question. Hey, are, are we going to see maybe uh, Tyron uh, featured on Showtime again in some other type of fights, whether if that's MMA or whatever he chooses? Um, what, what, what direction are you going with these type of events? Uh, was that question for me? Uh, yeah, it could be. Uh, uh, let's start with you first, Bill, and then uh, I'll hear with you guys. We have a long say. time, you guys. We kind of long time. Let's be respectful to my schedule. Um, this is a conference for questions to me, so ask me the questions you want to ask me, and if you want to ask Chris, uh, you can ask him that when I hop off. Yeah, fair enough. Around, so, uh, respect. Uh, Ron, let, let me start with you then. Uh, one final question, and, and then we'll we'll cut you loose here if this is the last one. Uh, your prediction on this, um, how does it end, and when does it end? 
Um, my prediction is a knockout. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, when that happens, it depends on him. Because how much how much damage he can take, how much violence he can endure, and the openings. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna just sit here and say I'm gonna knock him out the first round. You know what I mean? Um, I'm not gonna give away my game plan, but it's, it's really based upon what I would do if I was him. And I'm making my game plan off of that. So I don't I don't see him just opening up and getting big openings in the first round. So I'm gonna I'm gonna look for him if they're there. I'm gonna take him. But um, I, I feel like this fight's gonna end in the knock. Okay, that's all I got. Okay, that's just about all the time we have. Tyron, thank you again for joining. Um, thanks for jumping okay. in. Looking forward to a terrific event on Saturday, December 18th, live from Amelie Arena, Tampa, Florida, and live on Showtime Pay-Per-View.